get this show rolling. Are you good? Are you guys good? Y'all good? All right, all right. We got, we got a killer coming out to the stage. I need y'all to get ready. Stop making noise right now. Stop clapping hands right now. Please help me welcome from Old Cliff, Texas. in the building make some noise for me one time for those of y'all that don't know my name is black run b-l-a-q i call myself that because i love being black anybody else love being black you feel me and i'm, I'm not anti nobody i'm just real pro black like in fact i do black people research like y'all know down here we celebrate juneteenth now, for those of y'all that don't know what it's for, Juneteenth commemorates June the 19th, 1865. That's the day the slaves down here in Texas finally found out we were free. That's right, a whole year and a half after the freedom paperwork had been processed, we finally got the damn news, which is why it bothers me that white folks just gave black folks the stereotype of being late. I'd be like, uh... Y'all was first with that late shit, fam. I, I can be 18 minutes late to work if you can be 18 months late with my freedom. That's an that's a even-ass trade-off. Get out my face, Tom. I was at a Juneteenth barbecue last time. I was at a little family function, and I observed a Negro phenomenon. It dawned on me that black folks, no matter what the occasion, all love to line dance. I'm talking about wedding, graduation, funeral, it don't matter. All we need is a five, six, seven, eight, and we already know what foot to be on. What no rehearsal or none of that, didn't no email go out or nothing. It's just, it's encoded in our DNA and it, it mystified me. I wanted to know how all black folks innately, instinctively know how to line dance. So I researched it. Come to find out the electric slide is over 153 years old and it originated as an escape route for slaves. White people, listen up, see. One Sunday, it was a chief slave. He was the escape coordinator. He had to get the plan out without alerting Massa to the ongoing. So he gathered us all together in a field. He was like, gather round, everybody. We gonna get ourselves to freedom. Clap, y'all. Gather round, everybody. We gonna get ourselves to freedom. Look here, we take two miles to the north. Then two miles to the west. Well, if you see them dogs, just back it up. A minute ago, them dogs, just back it up. And then peek out for Massa. Everybody just peek out for Massa. Massa gone, well, then grab your bag and let's dip on his ass. Y'all didn't even know that, good job. Each one, teach one. You know the hardest part about being black in 2018? It's being a grown ass man. Like, I remember when I was a little boy, I could not wait to grow up and be a grown ass man. I used to dream about it at night. I was gonna shave, my voice was gonna change, people were gonna call me sir and mister, and most of all, I was gonna wear grown man clothes. But no sooner than I got grown, these diabolical fashion industry people went out and switched up the whole grown man wardrobe. And now boys is wearing what I like to call little bitty bitch ass clothes. Can y'all say it in here with me tonight? Little bitty bitch ass clothes. Uh, let's talk about the britches, shall we? Uh, fellas, when did all of us agree that all the britches was gonna be tight? Super tight, blood pressure tight, tight. When you gotta wear your left ball on your left leg and your right ball on your right leg and your meat gotta ride side saddle because ain't enough room in the front for your whole unit. Ladies know what I'm talking about. Y'all be seeing these fat coochie dudes walking around, camel toe on fleek, monkey big in these jeans. That, that is not vagina, ma'am. That is not vagina at all. That, that be balls all bunched up in the little bit of bitch ass britches and I for one I just don't appreciate it I don't I don't I don't appreciate it it's hard being a grown man hardest thing about being a grown man is taking an L me and we we don't like
like taking L's. Like me, myself, personally, I don't care if it's fourth quarter, 30 seconds left, we down by 85. In my mind, we still got a chance. What's gonna happen is they gonna inbound me the ball. I'm gonna hit an 86 pointer from half court and I'm gonna save the day. Might not work for you, but it worked for me. And I had to learn the hard way. Sometimes it's all right to walk away. Fellas, listen to me when I say this. It's only a couple things in life worth dying over. And an argument with a stranger is not one of those things. Walk away sometimes, dog, and you ain't no less of a man for doing that. I was at the toy store. I'm toy shopping for my little girl. I didn't see nothing that I liked, so I turned, I get ready to walk off. But in my haste to turn, I accidentally bumped this big-ass dude standing behind me. Now I'm a grown man, so I apologized like one. I said, excuse me, big dog, I didn't even see you right there, man. My bad. Hey, you have a good one. And I made my way on down the aisle, but behind me I heard, you better watch where you going, bitch. And I was like, what? <laughs> you want to run that by me again, big man? And he said, you heard me. Watch where you going, bitch. Now I got to dead the situation right there. Because I walked in the store, zero bitches. I'm not going to leave two of his bitches. I, I just refused. I'll be damned. So I got it together. <clears throat> Say, look here, big man. I don't know who you got me confused with, player. I ain't never been nobody, bitch. You understand me? And if we got a problem, come see me, homie. And I left my face toe up, because usually that works. Now let me just say, I did not know he was retarded before the fight had started. He got the hooping and hollering, what you want to do? What you want to do? So now I got to fight him. You call me two bitches, now you loud talk, you making a scene. Uh -uh. Come on, line it up, bring it here, get it together. So I got mine together real good, and he cocked his way up in the air. And I'm willing to tell y'all, I had never seen nothing like that ever before. So I looked up, see what it was, pow, he brought it down real hard. Hit me in between my eyebrows. Uh, bro, you ever got hit like all right here with this part right here? I was woozy as hell. You hear me? He had stumbled me. He had stumbled me. I got myself together and when I looked up, he had a brand new one waiting on me. Pow! Hit me in the same spot. The accuracy on it was amazing. This boy was precise as hell. You hear me? I was drunk. I was drunk. And I, made, and I was trying to tackle him, but it was three of his ass, and I couldn't decide on which one to go for it. Before I got that one in the middle, he had tricked me and got it ready again. I don't know why I looked up, but I did. Pow! He brought it down, hit me in the same exact spot. I didn't know what else to do. I just balled up on the floor, blew the whistle until his chaperone came. I just blew the safety whistle and let the people come get him. Awesome. You know what, I think y'all judging me, and I don't appreciate it. I'll tell you what I did do though, I stole his move. That's what you do when you lose a fight. You take what they did to win, you add it to your repertoire. You mess with me now, I get that thing ready for your forehead. I don't play no games, I'm 12 and 0 since that one. I don't count that as no loss. He had special needs, he was super strong. Him jump me. Anybody here is single? Single people make some noise. Um, before y'all get married, I encourage everybody to do one thing. Go date somebody outside your race. It's good for you. Help broaden your horizons. I was dating this Latino girl last relationship before last, and uh, she told me she's going to take me out and teach me how to salsa dance. I'm like, I'm black. I got a rhythm. Let's go. We get to the club, club got a live band, band jamming. We go in there and it's music like ba da ba da ba ba. I'm like, oh shit. I'm black, I'm in there two stepping. Doing my duggy, dabbing and everything. Band director gonna get the microphone, start singing, scared the hell out of me. He said, Buruscandundi, scared the bunda. And I don't speak no Spanish, so to me it sounded like he was saying, on the count of three, everyone stab the Negro. And I, I looked around and there weren't no Negroes. 
But no Negroes. But no Negroes. So I broke up with her right then and there that night. Uh, but other than that, date outside your race is good for you. It's healthy. Anyway, I gotta go, y'all. I'm Black Run. I appreciate it. Black fucking Ron, ladies and gentlemen. Woo, that shit right there, boy. <laughs> ah, damn. Oh, hey, I, fuck, I don't even know what to say, you know? That was brilliant.